What is going on, YouTube people? Today, we are going to go over a slew of random PSA information and news. Uh, PSA did a uh, like a 40 minute, maybe an hour long Q&A slash Instagram live for, I guess, 1010 day is a thing now that the grading companies are basically creating. It's basically like the hallmark holiday of sports card grading all the different grading companies put out marketing and promos around 1010 and as part of it ryan the president at psa sat down did a live stream uh gave us some newsy bits answered some questions so we're just going to kind of run through some of the highlights from this kind of just going in chronological order here as they covered things throughout the stream one of the first things they talked about was expansion on how they are adding new offices and they are adding another U.S. office. PSA Texas is coming uh, sometime next year. I don't know if they're going to be doing grading out of Texas, but they did say at some point in time you will be able to do drop-offs at the Texas office. It's going to be in Plano, Texas. Uh, and they say they may have some other events around drop-offs or certain days that you could drop off and things like that. So if you live in that neck of the woods, um, essentially, regardless what part of the country you're in, they're going to have the whole thing covered. They got the California office on the West Coast, New Jersey office on the East Coast, and now Texas smack dab in the middle. So if you have super high-end stuff, it might be easier to get it to one of those. One of the other things that they discussed, which speaking of making it easier to submit... Uh, they discussed about the success of their PSA drop-off events. I know that they've been doing a lot of those lately. So if you don't want to ship your cards, follow their socials. They might be doing a local drop-off event around you or within relative driving distance. And I think they're going to expand out that program uh, even more next year. The other thing they mentioned was PSA Europe. Uh, I don't know how much of an EU yacht audience I have, but they are going to off, uh, open an office in the EU somewhere in Europe, no location given yet, kind of like the, how they have the Japan office uh, to basically make things easier to submit internationally. And I think they are moving their PSA Canada office to Ontario as well and part of the international thing. So they continue to expand out the international footprint. And I think that's going to give them a big edge over some of the other companies in regards to ease of grading. I mean, I don't live overseas, but I am sure grading a card when you live overseas is not the simplest thing in the world between shipping, duties, uh, you know, shipping it back, using third parties or getting it shipped directly to you. I know there's a lot of hoops that have to be jumped through or to, you have to jump through for all that stuff. Um, case updates. Flow lines appear to be fixed. And they should be seeing those start to roll back out again. So if you remember what those are, those are the little cracks. Well, they're not physically cracks, but they look like cracks that were in the corners of the new slabs that they rolled out ever so briefly. Uh, those have been fixed. So it sounds like they are moving forward with the new slab uh, that kind of snuck out a little bit. And then, like I said, the flow lines popped up. They also showed off, and I don't know where it's at in here, replaying Instagram reels is the stupidest thing ever on desktop. You can't fast forward. But they have a new insert for die cut cards, which is actually pretty slick. Uh, if you submit, and this is going to be starting, it sounds like, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but if you send in a die cut card, they are basically laser cutting a insert that the die cut will basically fit right into. They show it on this stream. It's pretty early on. Maybe it'll pop up while I'm, I just have the stream running with it muted while we're sitting here chatting, but it looked really good. I'm not going to lie. Um, apparently it's very hard to see the insert and at least on, you know, Instagram reels aren't exactly the highest quality video. Uh, it looked like it was pretty tough to see. It almost makes it look like the card is just floating in the case. Versus, I mean, we've all seen the PSA cases where the die cuts in there and it's like all cockeyed. Uh, this actually looked pretty slick. Uh, but Ryan had mentioned that they are basically specking out the card and then laser cutting the insert to match uh, the card almost exactly. So looked pretty cool. I don't, I don't, I have to look through and see what I have for die cuts. Um, I think I have, I might have a couple Manny Ramirez die cuts 
But I don't think I have anything super, super crazy. I'll have to look through my slabs and see if I have anything that might actually be able to take advantage of that. They did talk about the submission stuff with the, you know, using semi-rigids as much as possible. They did note that they understand that not all cards fit inside a semi-ridge. So if you don't want to use one for an RPA or a higher point card, you could still, it's still okay to submit those in top loaders or mags or whatever they are understanding of that situation. But just your standard size card, they want in semi-rigid as much as possible. They did mention there will be more details coming out in regards to what are the charges going to look like and how that stuff's going to work uh, if you are submitting things in the incorrect packaging, basically. Essentially, don't submit your regular cards in top loaders. And he does get into the reasons why behind that. Basically, they have tech in place that makes life easier and helps speed up the processes on things. And it's all built around the cards being in semi ridges. So if they start coming in in top loaders or mixed, basically they have to take the cards out and put it inside one of those and it just bogs everything down. So it kind of makes sense why they want to do that. They talked about their PSA vault slash eBay integration. Uh, Ryan said that fixed marketplace will be coming by the end of the year. Right now, if you have cards in the PSA vault and you want to sell them on eBay, the only way to do it is to run an auction. Well, by the end of the year, you will be able to list items at a fixed price. So that is something nice to see there in regards to the eBay vault. I have not used that yet. I'm actually contemplating whether or not I want to use the direct sell through eBay. Um, I have a couple grading orders. That grading order that I sent, the bulk and the, the, the basically the two small orders that I sent, are both in an assembly. It's been about a month, so probably be getting grades popped on those pretty soon. Oh, and actually, there you go on the screen. That is the new die cut holder. That thing looks slick, in my opinion. You cannot tell that it is, that there's anything in there, at least on this. You know, once again, Instagram video, but that looks really, really good, at least from afar. We'll have to see what they look like once people start getting them in hand. Oh, so to circle back to the eBay stuff, uh, the fixed price thing is coming. And, you know, I haven't used that service yet, so, but I do have that order getting ready to pop. I may try it. I don't know yet. I don't, I feel like I would just rather have the cards back in hand and deal with it myself. But the idea of the ones that I know I want to sell right off as soon as I get them back doesn't make more sense just to use them and just save messing around with it. I need to think about that. I'll probably wait and see what they grade and then make, maybe make a decision from there. Maybe test it with one or two cards. We'll see. He did get a question about uh, will PSA ever do subgrades and basically shot that down fairly quickly. They did talk about expanding graders notes a couple different times, possibly offering it to lower tiers, maybe with an add-on charge depending on what tier you're submitting at. I think it'll always be included on the upper tiers. But if you're submitting a card at $15 or whatever, and you want graders notes, you may be able to get them in the future, but you might have to pay a couple bucks to have those on there uh, to be able to access those. I still, my biggest gripe with PSA graders notes is they are not public. I still think that is something they should revisit and relook at. Maybe that's just me coming from the comic book world. Uh, I hope that when they roll out graders notes for comic books, that they make them public. Uh, they will get a lot of blowback if graders notes are not public on comics. Uh, just a quick side note. I don't know when they're going to show up, but I posted it on Instagram. Uh, they did show an upgraded comic book label. Uh, they did make some tweaks to the comic book label. It's still not finalized yet. Uh, but they do show it off in this video. You could check out a closer grab of that, screen grab of that on my Instagram feed. He got a question about AI. And he kind of ran down a couple places where PSA is using AI. Uh, the main three that he listed were identification. So essentially like those card scanning apps that are out there to help identify the cards quicker and easier to basically save manual input on identifying what card it is. The card that you sent in actually matches what's on your paperwork. 
Uh, they also mentioned counterfeit detection. Essentially, it sounds like they have their scanning system has a database of known things to look for and known fakes. And it flags that if one of those things pop up for the grader to take a closer look at. And then he called it a centering assist where essentially it gives the grader what it thinks centering is. But it's still ultimately up to the grader to make a determination on it just in case. Uh, but he called it a centering assist just to kind of take one step away or a, a decent part of a step away. They can eyeball it and then use the centering assist. And then if they need to dig deeper, they can. They still have that option. Uh, but just one of those things to kind of smooth things out. Because you would think centering of all things would be the easiest for an AI to identify. I still think surface and stuff like that has got to be pretty tricky. He did show, not sports card related, but kind of interesting, and it's very much in the early stages, uh, the baseball holder. I'm not a baseball guy, per se. I mean, I'm a baseball fan, obviously, but like actual autographed baseballs, essentially, they're going to have a holder for autographed baseballs that are PSA DNA off. Uh, it's UV protected, and then it'll be sealed, and it's in a little cube, just like you see when you go to the shows, how they put them in cubes and it's got a little PSA label on the front and everything. It's kind of slick. Uh, I'm not going to lie. And I know, you know, PSA DNA autograph baseballs and just autograph baseballs in general are a pretty big deal. Uh, to have a holder for that, I think is actually pretty smart. There's a lot of those out there. Uh, and just to have it authenticated. And even if you don't get, obviously I don't think they're going to be grading the baseball per se. I guess they could grade the SIG. Uh, but just to have it authenticated in the holder and protected and then just be able to display that, I actually think is a pretty good idea. I'm surprised no one else has tried to jump into anything like that. And then the last thing to, that they touched on was, you know, the ever hot button issue around around card cleaning. Um, I mean, they didn't really like there's no new shocking revelations here. It's basically essentially don't use chemicals on a card if you need to wipe fingerprints off do it with a dry microfiber if you submit cards with chemicals there is a chance they could get rejected and they he vaguely cites the luca thing that happened he doesn't name it by name but if you know you know you could tell by the way that they were talking about it that the, he's like there was a card that recently popped up it got, got a lot of social media attention and we re, we we re-looked at it i don't know why i can't talk tonight so, and he basically also ultimately admits, you know, hey, we're, we still can't basically catch all this stuff, uh, but they look at everything. My other big takeaway from this is, and I kind of already knew this based off some interactions that I've had with some folks over at PSA, and they kind of go into the, the details of why, but they they do pay very close attention to social media. Um, if you tag them or Ryan or Nat or PSA card in general in stuff, and, and they say like, even if we don't respond, like we see it, trust us. And I could just tell you, like I said, from interactions I've had with them from various different people over there, they do definitely see that stuff. And even though we don't necessarily see them public reacting to it, it doesn't mean that things aren't happening behind the scenes. Uh, so I thought, I, I do think from, of the big grading companies, you know, they do catch a lot, of, a lot of flack, justifiably so in a lot of instances. But I do think they listen and pay attention to the pulse of what is going on more than the other grading companies do, in my opinion. Now, maybe that's just because they're bigger, they have more people, whatever the case might be. But that's just the vibe that I get. And I've interacted to some degree or another with all four major grading companies over the years. So that's all I got. That's kind of a quick rundown. If you want to check out the full thing, it's over on their Instagram feed. I thought the most interesting takeaways were the expansion. I, that doesn't sound like a big deal. It's nothing we see, but from a growing the grading pool being able to directly drop off easier across the world, I think is pretty, pretty big. 
uh, even though if it's not something we directly see. I also thought, which was just kind of a curveball, I didn't expect this coming out. I think the baseball holder thing is actually pretty interesting as well. I'll be curious to see where that goes as time goes on. That is all I got for you boys and girls today. Just a slew of PSA updates. I covered this last year when they did this on 1010 Day. So I thought we would take a look at it again this year. And I think there was some good little nuggets in there. So I got curious for your thoughts and comments as always down below. Catch you boys and girls on the next one. Base.